So, how was that? <laughs> tedious. It was tedious setting up, wasn't it? It was very tedious. The Captain Fit was getting on all the uh, technical stuff while I just attempted to play the guitar that wasn't mine in the corner of the room. I was surprised. You were actually fucking, like, yeah. pretty good. I'm, although, like, I suck at anything music-related, instruments, all that finicky shit. I'm absolutely trash. Mm. I wonder if there's any correlation between athletes and musicians. You've either got one skill or the other. I reckon it is. I reckon you've either got one or the other. And then, what do they say? They say that comedians and musicians are alike because they both, I suppose, mm. like two of the road, they both have the same... I, I think they have the same fucking issues mentally. Like, they're, like they're, both, they're all a bit fucked up. Like, if you look at rock stars and comedians, they're always, like, into, yeah, into the party drugs. and Alka drugs. Into, yeah, into the Alka drugs, <laughs> into all the crazy shit. I feel like there's a lot of creativity involved in both of those things as well. Whereas you don't need a whole lot of creativity to be an athlete. You just need a little bit of sickness inside. And Actually, Mr. Coach Eugene Teo, uh, wicked musician. I don't know if you'd class him as actually, an athlete. He is kind of an athlete. But I feel like he could be if he wanted to, but he's just too interested in life stuff instead. Yeah, yeah, true. I'll pay that. He could be elite if he like. He could be well. He used to do bodybuilding, didn't he? And then he did a bit, a bit of strength stuff as well. Yeah, I think he was powerlifting for a while and he was bodybuilding for a while. And now he's just full Ganbaru method. Cheeky shout outs to Coach Eugene, by the way, for just being the the tip top dude. He's a good dude. He's got fucking pretty nice hair too. <laughs> <laughs> Although he's he- on he's on the Instagram. Yeah. What's his? Uh, I think it's just Coach Eugene Teo. Yeah, it's good. Get on him. He does lots of daily uh, stories. I like to follow along. He's a. It's not many people that I check up on daily on Instagrams, but I'll go in and like actively search a few people that I want to see yeah. each day. He is one of them because he's always got a good story up. I'll pay that. His allergens are going uh, off the off their rockers lately, so he's doing all sorts of weird stuff. Doing like exposure therapy. It's kind of interesting actually. He's apparently allergic to the olive trees in the area so he took some leaves from the olive tree dehydrated them and made a tea out of them uh, as some sort of exposure <laughs> therapy <laughs> um, and he just basically put up a story he's like this is either really going to fuck me up or it's really going to help so I like that that's like the same concept as a fucking vaccine isn't it like yeah just small doses mm. eventually you become immune to it it was like that have I told you my theory of like how we're going to win in the intergalactic kind of like inevitable intergalactic war no but intergalactic reminds me of the old uh, ninja turtles <laughs> from, from like 2005 when there was like 12 dimensions anyway carry on <laughs> oh fuck so my theory is that what we've got to do if we want to win these fucking this inevitable intergalactic war that we're going to have with aliens and people from other planets and shit like that space is full of radiation the only way we're going to be able to actually go to space and be successful in living in space is if we start ha- having people live near like really dense radiation like we're all nuclear plants <laughs> yep like start having families live at chernobyl like grow up their kids will grow up be more you know be more immune to radiation mm-hmm. and then their kids kids will be even more immune to radiation and eventually in that, like a couple of hundred maybe like 500 years we're gonna have these fucking athletes like train them like fucking train them train them real good we're gonna have these athletes that can go into space and not be affected by radiation and fuck and crush this <laughs> crush go this into, wall go into space and fuck nah I like it <laughs> <laughs> and then those babies will be even fucking more immune to yeah, shit I like it I, it changes the concept of world war 3 like the nuclear war being mm. a bad thing to being like it's just the next step in our evolution yeah have you seen the movie Titan I have not with Sam Worthington I think yeah. He's, he's the dude from Avatar, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Weird, cool. super weird movie. Probably wouldn't recommend it. Wasted two hours. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a cool concept that basically it was the same sort of theme of like exposure therapy, kind of like Deadpool, how they like force him to evolve oh. through like giving him some sort of serum and then exposing him to so much pain and whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar concept, but they expose him to basically be able to survive life on Mars. It's like extreme cold, low oxygen levels, whatever it is on Mars. Fuck. Um, 
and only like a few people actually make the mutations that they need to to be able to survive on i think they might have called them uh they were renaming it planet titan because mars wasn't good enough for them yeah like- something along those lines but it was a cool concept that to move to space you first have to make some sort of mutations and only the strongest survive the rest just die yeah <laughs> kind of like, it's just like evolution like get get rid of the weak ones only the strong survive yeah well that's what that's how we became like that's how fucking we're still here all the all the weaklings yeah. got fucking didn't make it and you know i feel like that's uh what's currently happening now is yeah. good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the weaklings are getting yeah all the weak immune Dispose. systems yeah yeah legit if you weren't looking after your health before whenever this started 2019 yeah sucker yeah you, you you're stressing out now that's what like rogan says that which is amazing that like they're all pushing the vaccine they're pushing all this kind of shit at the moment like you gotta like self-isolate have the mm. vaccine you know wear a mask do your thing they're not saying make your immune system stronger they're not mm. like hey maybe we should you know you should eat better stuff maybe exercise maybe keep the gyms open so people can exercise like do that kind of stuff they're not doing any of that they're just like mm, just take this and you'll be fine you can keep mm. eating shit you can keep not looking after yourself just take this and you'll be, you'll be sweet it's the easy way out yeah the lazy way out which I feel like is now now's generation to everything always taking the lazy easy option Actually, shout 100%. out to Coach Tice for putting that thought-provoking uh, Insta post out the other day. I was like, why do people always take the the easy route in the short term when they know that in the long term it's going to be detrimental to their, their progress or success? I saw... Did I, I think I read it out on last week's podcast. That thing Lucy put up, Lucy Bartholomew, mm-hmm. about like athletes, how like in order to be successful as an athlete, you do things like you do things that will impact your life in the long term or you do things that will negatively impact your life in the long term so you do things in the short term that'll like chop years off your life in the long term yeah i feel like it's the same kind of thing yeah you did touch on that like why would you my fucking butt cheeks are sticking to this chair (laughs) why would you um i need it to be fabric can't do with leather why would you do shit that's gonna make your life like I, i don't get it yeah, I, get it. I feel like there's like a certain, I don't know, doing the bad stuff that's going to hinder your life expectancy. I don't get why you would do that sort of stuff in the pursuit of athleticism. But like if you were training heaps to be the best at something and you developed, I don't know, some sort of like tendonitis or something or like early mm-hmm. onset arthritis or something like yeah. that kind of stuff makes sense because you have to train to be the best. But the people like putting weird stuff in their bodies and doing weird surgical procedures and stuff to try and enhance stuff and... I suppose cheat if it is cheating in their yeah. federation or whatever. Um, that stuff to me doesn't make sense. But I probably don't have the mind of a athlete, so I've never wanted to be the best of the best at anything. I mean, I want to be the best of the best at everything, but I'd go the superhero route before I went the athlete route. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Fucking hell. It's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like, I guess we both have that in common. We both just like a bunch of shit. Like, if we were left to our own devices as in we were allowed to do whatever the fuck we wanted in life with no consequences we'd probably end up just training a bunch of different stuff and we would never really get good at anything because we'd be like I want to do this oh but you know what I'm going to do this too now oh no I've done my four week strength training block I'm going to do four weeks of Ironman training oh I've done my four weeks Ironman training I'm going to stretch for four weeks now and you just never get any better that's literally been my last (laughs) five years of training I'm just really really slowly getting better at everything but it's a Actually, you mentioned it uh, in like episode three or something, this podcast. Um, it was a quote and you couldn't quite get it. It was a Ben Bergeron podcast um, that we should have a... a di- uh, sorry. Oh, no. Now I've forgotten it. The pressure's on. It's not uh, like we're recording this live. No. Nah. So that's fine. But we kind of are. <laughs> one, one take wonders. <laughs> um, something about having a... Lo- ah, here it is. Having a low trajectory on a distant horizon for ah, gains. That's the one. So the concept of like, don't focus on getting heaps of gains over the next six months at the risk of just burning out and then being useless when you're 60. Yeah. Set the, set the goals for being your strongest and fittest when you're 60. Probably not when you're 60. But like, yeah. set a very distant horizon and just really slowly get like 0.1% better every day, which I kind of feel like that's sort of the journey my 
my five years of six years of training has taken like it's yeah. been super random little powerlifting phase little crossfit phase little whatever different stuff all the time but where i currently sit today is a little better at everything much better well you're much stronger than a lot of shit and you're like running too you're fucking way yeah. better at running as well yeah my dis- distance is up my weights are up sex appeals up yeah fucking earth everything's better and i feel like that ties into what we were talking about before in today's society everyone kind of being like lazy wanting the quick fix the short no one really wants to do the hard work no one wants to say all right in order like i'll use the example of iron man because well i just did one that's the landscape and that's my yeah that's my that's my shit so like i didn't two years ago i didn't say all right well actually i kind of did i kind of said i'm gonna do an iron man in six months and i'm so glad covid cancelled that because if i had done it in that six months it would have fucking sucked so much like it hurt when i did it this year and that was yeah. like an extra year an on extra top 12 months of prep like i sh- even i was naive to the fact that no, i should have set my horizon further down the track like i was told <laughs> it, it, uh, we don't even know if that sounded like you farted this is the squeaky chairs <laughs> no nah, <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll claim it if i fart it'll be a good one <laughs> you week. have to get the mic and put it real close <laughs> um <laughs> yeah like you know i didn't realize that I was going to need, you know, an extra time. Like everyone told me, no, no, you should do the one next year, not this year. And I was like, nah, fucking stubborn as. I'm so grateful it got pushed because I would have been fucked. Yeah. I would have died out there. Probably not died, but I would have, you know, it would have sucked. Mm. I feel like that's the easiest way to get yourself into like, if you want to train mentally for something, just go into something unprepared and then just. Yep. Like, uh, Mr. Grey Wolf, Shane Egan. He's, he's getting plenty of mentions on this podcast. He's yeah, he is. It. He's going to have to come on one day. Yeah, hey, he'd be a good guest. Yeah. Um, but he was saying to me recently that he's looking for his next challenge and he wants to get to that stage where he's just... Because he's run 100K races and finished up pretty good. Yeah. He wants to get to that stage where he's just like, he's crossed the finish line and he's just delirious. And he's like, no, no, no. I've got another, I've got another three days to go. Like, I, I need some... I need some snacks and I'm off. But he wants to be like, Shane, Shane you're done. You're you finished. You stop, man. What? Like, no, no, no. <laughs> like trying to push people off, trying to keep running. And I was thinking about it. I was like, you could easily do that over a marathon if you just went went in super malnourished, had a bad sleep, big training week and everything, yeah. and then just go in and run as hard as you possibly can. Like you can bonk pretty easy in 20K and then your mental challenge is on from there. It sucks. Yeah. Like people, people absolutely sending it in marathons get to that stage pretty easy. Like, I, don't, I feel like you don't have to run a hundred miles or something to find it. Like just go into something short, super ill prepared and yeah. you get there. Legit. Like take six months off and then, all right, I'm going to run 40 Ks <laughs> fast. Like it's going to suck a lot. Yeah. Speaking of running 40 Ks fast, do you see Jared Clifford's running lately? This is one for the Aussies. Yes. Local. Oh, you told me about this when we were running the other day. Oh yeah. Nice. Um, one of the local... Local boys of the Eltham area um, competing in the Paralympics accidentally qualified for the marathon. Accidentally. <laughs> I think it was just a training run or something. I can't remember what it was. He was doing one of the marathons in Sydney um, and his running partner was just just pushing him to go faster and faster and faster and they ended up getting like the world record or something for his par- uh, yeah Paralympic whatever qualifier. Fucking hell. Then ends up going to the Olympics and he got silver after doing like three other days of races. Which is wicked, but he's running like I can't remember what it was, like two hours sixteen or seventeen or something. Like hey, hey, if you were to get to go out and try and match that time, like malnourished, undertrained, six months off training, you'll hit that dark stage real quick. Yeah, probably within five k's. Yeah. I fucking felt like that today on my run. It was literally it was nothing special. It was like what was it? Eight k's off the bike, six hard, two cruisy, and the six hard like i got three k's in and i was like a fucking zombie i was running past people with like that face where it was like (laughs) one face and it was like (laughs) and you just fucking you have no no soul in your eyes and you're fucked you're just running like i felt that shit within three k's if i had to run if i had to run 20 k's today i would have been delirious to hit the spot yeah that reminded that's like the double under face (laughs) yeah we don't realize how much loose skin you've got on your face until you video yourself in slow-mo Hit the bottom of that double under and you got three meter cheeks hanging down at your belly button. Everything's jiggling. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> oh, double unders. The fucking the the devil. That's how I did my, yeah. Did yeah. my calf. How's the baby cow going? Good. Much better now. Although I felt it when we were out there deadlifting. Mm-hmm. We just had a juicy sesh of uh, some strength stuff. Yeah. Some big boy weights. 
<laughs> in by our standards. Yeah. Yeah. Big boy. It's, everything's relative. Yes. With small boys. Well, I'll speak for myself there. Mm, little man. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Little men, little calves. No, that was it. Was good. I feel like I feel like I should introduce you to. This is yeah. If, like we've already just fucking spoken for 15 minutes. I haven't said who this is. This is Ben, <laughs> Dr. Fat, hey. a Dr. Fat blueprint. He is officially my first guest on this podcast. This is the Towing the Line podcast. Another thing I forgot to mention. Um, yeah, we like just, you know, I wanted to get someone pretty awesome on. And like we've done a lot of sh- cool shit together from way back. Like how many years has, have we been? Have we, how many years have we known each other? Is it like 18, 17? Oh, they oh, sounds like seventeen earlier. years. Oh, I okay. <laughs> mean, a lot of that <laughs> feels like it. <laughs> um, the years have been that stressful that it feels like seventeen <laughs> years. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I don't know. It'll be. It was at a Spartan race. Yeah, it was the very. It was, was the it, first one that we both did, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it eighteen? I don't know what year that was. I did. I, did, I was thinking that when I come on here, I'm going to fact check. I'm going to be the fact checking guy. So let me do some fact checking. Yeah. Nice. I'll carry. You the carry on. I don't actually don't know how to fact check this. Yeah, we did our first. I think I mentioned it in one of our earlier episodes. I'm also filming this one, so I got my GoPro. It's fucking cool. I'm hoping that I can film this whole podcast and actually put it up on YouTube. And we are definitely not in the same room together. We've just got really, really good at green screen. Um, we made a set that we have duplicated at each other's homes and we've put the green screen up. So, I mean, I will gladly, I would gladly flash up an, an effect on the background because it is green screen, but I'm not going to do that because I want it to look real and authentic. Um, so we're definitely not in the same room together. That's why we're separated. That's, that's why it appears like if I was to put my hand over this line, it wouldn't go because it's a different camera lens where we're abiding by these COVID, COVID rules. Um, we're not breaking anything. This is a green screen setup. So fact check that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no one actually, uh, is there timestamps on stuff? Can people fact timestamp and fact check when stuff was recorded uh, no, like, yeah, you can't is, <clears throat> suck it <laughs> so the year is 2017 <laughs> yes I have preemptively recorded this on the GoPro Hero 5 <clears throat> yeah it's good old. quality for the old thing yeah <laughs> um, I can't really fact check when we did our first one because I don't actually have any I was oh, just scrolling through the Instagram your Instagram um, page started only started 14th of oh. December 2017. So it was so before that. Minimum 2017. Um, Maybe I've got it on my other. Yeah, I have, you can. I have an old, old Instagram page. For those who don't know, it's like super old. The old dip doing fit shit. No, oh, this no is, you renamed that to. Yeah, I renamed yeah. that to the one now. So I had one from back fucking years ago. It's actually a.d.p underscore 95. That's got. There we go. There's this, the first. Did you do the Tough Mudder? Were you in that? Nah, you weren't in that crew. The, the first Tough Mudder crew. Nah, I was in the second one. That was in 16. And I didn't have the cool t-shirt, so I just got a permanent marker and wrote on an orange t-shirt. And that was the... Oh, no, here we go. Yeah, that's the one. This one, yes. That was 4th of March, 2017. Damn. How many nice. years is that? You do the math. Four. Nice. If we're in 2021. Is but it we're only not. four? We're in 2017. Because we're in the same. So it's one room. month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only four. But I feel like we. Ah. Wow, it feels like it's been at least ten yeah. years. Yeah, especially least. considering the last two years has been COVID riddled. So we've and we barely haven't really seen each other. Legit, like for two years we probably trained. Well, we did nearly did a thir- every Thursday. We we did the thrasher, and then once I started Ironman training, so end of twenty nineteen, that's when we kind of like started doing different stuff. Mm. I think you would do. You did more strength, strength kind of training. Yeah, went down the big boy route. Yeah, and then I was like, I, I, I got to do. I got to do more endurance stuff. So my strength training dropped off, and I, you know, was riding, running, and we stopped doing our thrashes because I just didn't have room for it in my programming. And then, yeah, mm. last year COVID, we didn't really see each other in 2020 at all, did we? Nah, not much but at all. We got one of those mad friendships, mateships, where we were kind of just like. Yeah, you do your thing. I'll do my thing. I'll just like see you in eight months. 
yeah legit that, that's literally what it was and then like i saw you got injured i was like man you're all right <laughs> that sucks uh, yeah all good okay all right, see you next see week in a few months yeah <laughs> never like yeah we fuck we didn't catch up and then this year we've caught up a bit because it was like ah uh, well i moved you. closer yeah that was a big one true Just to live an hour away from here mm. super helpful now now you're like 15 minutes which is handy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not that we're together at the moment though because we're in the green screen of course whole, yeah <laughs> and the year is still 2017 yeah hey but, what would you tell your 2017 self uh knowing what you know now if you could time travel oh shit that's a fucking good question mm. um if you knew that you're about to spend two years sitting in this room quarantining i reckon yeah. Well, I honestly reckon I would tell myself to just struggle a bit harder and train less. Well, train smarter. I feel like I was doing too much in 17. Yeah, right. I feel like I was doing too much of nothing. Like I was all over the place. I wasn't yeah. doing a heap. So I feel like I could tell myself to train better mm-hmm. at like focus more mm. on something. Would you have taken your own advice back then? No. No. <laughs> I would have told myself to get fucked. Get fuck. <laughs> I, was th- I was thinking this the other day. Like, if I could go back and give, like, myself, like, if I could, because I'm a, oh, yeah, probably for reference of the, on the podcast, I am a, a trainer, PT, coach, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was thinking if I could go back and run my own PT session, like, for myself, what kind of, like, values and stuff would I try and instill in myself? And, like, what would I try and tell myself and coach myself to do? Um, and I was thinking about it would I have actually listened at the very start and I don't think so I think I'm someone who needs to make my own mistakes yeah um, like injuring my back last, last year yeah was probably one of the best things that could have happened to me in terms of like learning how to train smarter but had someone have told me all of the stuff prior to the injury I don't think I would have actually absorbed the information and valued it I would just been like ah, yeah whatever I'm young I'm awesome I'm not going to get injured I'm yeah. fine go yeah. away I'm, I'm good so far but after injuring myself I'm like oh okay I'm open to so many new concepts and ideas now that no one's invincible yeah it's it's true isn't it like you don't think I feel like I feel like I'm the same too I'm always like yeah 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 whatever over train mm. over train whatever it doesn't matter and then I get injured I'm like fuck you were right and then mm. I'm like alright I'll do everything I need to do and I'll, I'll make sure I commit to doing it and then I do it for like two weeks and then I don't commit <laughs> like the yoga thing I was like fuck yeah I'm gonna do yoga f- three times a week this week I've been super slack so I'm gonna have to do double yoga day tomorrow to make up for it if I'm still gonna hit my three 15 minute sessions in but like I'm like that as soon as I get better I'm like ah fuck it I'll be right <laughs> and then I get injured again you know later down the track cause I'm a fucking idiot but I feel like it's a bit like that so what did you do to your back how did you mm. how did you do it or how do you think you did it uh, and then the roadmap out of there well that kind of ties into what you just said in terms of like doing rehab stuff or stuff to make it better for about two weeks and then being like ah, oh, I'm in the clear I'm all out of it I reckon I was doing the injury for probably like 12 months <laughs> like, like I was just slowly increasing the amount of stress and load um, of just like all my training volume I was slowly decreasing the amount of like rehab prehab stuff I was doing stretching was falling out the window uh, like my actual workload at my job was increasing and I reckon over like the space of 12 months everything was just kind of getting worse and worse and then to top it off I did this great concept called the uh, ski for Gracie which is <laughs> something that I came up with because we were in isolation at the time um, had nothing better to do so I nabbed a ski erg from work uh, and to raise money for a uh, pediatric brain cancer one of the foundations close to one of our members hearts um, I did a 6k ski every day for four weeks um, so it was four marathons of skiing over, yeah, four weeks. So 6K a day. Um, and I was living in Coldstream at the time. For anyone local to the area knows that Coldstream is cold. And it was, it was the middle of winter. So I, just because I wanted to get all these skis done every day, I was just so sick of them by like day one. <laughs> I'd roll out, to the, roll out to the shed. It'd be like, I don't know, zero or like minus one degrees. And I would just... Frost. No warm-ups, just start skiing, which is a very hinge dominant movement. For those who don't know, it's very intensive on like lots of activation sort of through like hip flexors, core, all the front side of stuff, and then hamstrings, glutes, lower back, coming back up. And I feel like if you're not engaged properly going down and coming up, it's literally like 
just doing a shit deadlift or doing like a Jefferson curl when you're not braced probably yeah. like you're just like bending and snapping your fucking spine yeah. like it's not good yeah except you're not really like you're not as tight as you are on a deadlift like you're just you're just flopping in and out of that range of motion yeah and over a 6k ski I don't really know what I was doing I think sort of like 1000 to 1100 reps a day so think about doing like a thousand shitty deadlifts every day you're gonna cook yourself pretty quick with no warm ups <laughs> cold conditions like um, so that was probably the catalyst. I put it down to day 11. I remember that just being the most difficult day ever. I would just do like one stroke. I would let go of the handles and I'd walk around for like 20 seconds. I'd come back and do one more stroke. And I'd be getting like three meters with my stroke. <laughs> so that day took me like an hour to finish what was normally like a 20 minute ski. Jeez. Um, but being the stubborn individual that I was, I was never going to start something and not finish it. So I finished off my 28 days. Um, I think I had a rest day. And then that next Monday, went to train with my cousin in the garage. We went to do some deadlifts and we just picked up the empty bar to start. And I was like, oh, this is, something doesn't feel right. Like I was sore for that whole 28 days, but I didn't really <laughs> consider that something might've been seriously wrong. I just thought I was just gen, uh, generally sore from yeah. doing so much load. From fucking skiing mm. every day. Then after a little bit of recovery and then doing something like a 20 kilo barbell deadlift, something that I was super used to and feeling the difference for like, oh, something's, Something's really not right here. So yeah. we built up, I don't know what we built up to, something pretty light. And then I, I chopped out halfway through the session. I was like, yeah, something's, something's not right. And then didn't train for the next few days. Pain sort of increased. I was struggling to walk, bend, all the, all the things. And then eventually went and saw my, my osteo. Um, and she was saying that it's probably a, either a disc or a facet sprain. So didn't send me off for scans because the re- rehab for both of those is basically the same thing. Um, so I just sort of started doing my rehab stuff was going good I sort of regressed everything back to just basic core work basic range of motion built up over I don't know maybe four or six weeks starting to feel strong I was back to like back squatting 100 kilos and stuff feeling good and then sitting down with a plate of food onto the couch just as I sit, stuck my butt back something went crashed onto the couch dropped my plate of food oh, no. and then I went to like ah oh, crap I gotta clean everything up went to bend over like pick it up and I was like oh nah nah something's, something's real bad um, oh. and I literally had like five or 10% strength in my legs. Like I couldn't stand on my own without grabbing, like grabbing onto something and like pulling myself up with my arms. Fuck that. So I then decided to go get scans. Um, and it turned out all it was, was just two mild disc bulges in L4, L5 and then L5 S1. So basically the little vertebrae down very lower part of your back, just above your butt. Um, and they weren't major at all. They were just minor, but for some reason I was just feeling extremely major symptoms from them like i'd have icy cold feet that would be tingling all the time um they'd go numb and then that was kind of just me for like the next three or four months i'd just get up i would walk to the couch with my walking stick i would do my online oh god coach my online zoom workouts because that was the the working landscape at the time crawl back to bed go to sleep do it again the next day <laughs> and that was it for months fuck and then now you're ripping what have, what have you back squat uh, yeah, so we just back squat 125 just then, and then we did some hit 160 on the deads. Yeah. Which is also cool, because I haven't really played with a barbell for, how long has this lockdown been? Eight weeks? Yeah, it's been, fuck, I can't believe we're still in lockdown, but yeah, it's been about mm. that long. Been about eight weeks using nothing but dumbbells. Fuck. Yeah. Well, like you were, like, well, you made a good point when we are out there back squatting. You were saying that uh, front rack dumbbell squats are mm. super transferable to back squat. Now, yeah, big time. why do you think that is? Uh, I would say probably because a lot of people's weakness in a back squat is never typically their legs. It's typically their trunk. Not, <laughs> not yeah. their... For people that don't know what a trunk is, it is your penis. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got weak trunks. They're underused. <laughs> like the bonobo monkeys, we should just get some more sex in. Uh, no, it's your fucking <laughs> midsection. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I, don't, uh, I reckon people lack uh, most people's back squat either lacks in leg strength or back strength but people typically don't address which one's weaker mm. and train towards improving it Yeah, people true. like to train towards their strengths so people with strong backs get stronger it feels with, way good way yeah, better way people, gooder yeah, you way know what gooder, I mean way gooder <laughs> I reckon yeah I reckon the CrossFit mentality is actually great in that sense yeah of like their whole philosophy is that you just work your weaknesses like whatever your weakest point is that's the thing that you do like seven days a week whatever you're strong at yeah you might do it once or twice a week it's like it makes so much sense but it sucks mm, yeah because you, you don't just, want to do the shit you suck no, at 
and you just you get so good at the failing mentality like you fail stuff all the time yeah. every day or you suck at stuff every day but i feel like it just makes not just better athletes but like better people like yeah. even when i'm walking around the house like the stuff that i absolutely suck at like washing i'm a young male i don't know how to wash things <laughs> but like i try and get better at washing every time i do it and i pay attention to like oh did that come out smelly did that come out right oh maybe i'll try a different mode on the washing machine next, next time, time. Like, yeah. whereas the stuff that i'm good at around the house which is not much <laughs> yeah, I'm a young male. <laughs> what, what do young males do around the house <laughs> gonna get a leaf blower wicked at blowing leaves that's cool that's kind of fun too oh so satisfying except for like you'll figure it out like there's leaves that decide no i'm just gonna i'm just gonna hang on to the ground and then you sit there with the leaf blower yeah. and you're like, <laughs> like turn it up maximum and the leaves like no i'm good man i'm just i'm happy hanging out here i don't really want to go anywhere and then you kick it and it moves like a foot and then it gets stuck on the ground again and you're like can you just fucking go? So you've got to bend down and pick it up and it defeats the whole purpose. But otherwise, most of the time it's great. Unless you've got like some groundsman super gluing your leaves down and no one's ever told you. <laughs> Maybe I've been coming out here every night like, super gluing them leaves down. Son of a bitch. I've been gluing this one. Fuck I know he loves blowing leaves. Yes, yeah. with his day. Um, oh, yeah. Fuck. I like the CrossFit mentality for that, for that of like just... Find the things that you suck at in training or life or yeah. anything and just get better at those things. Just what's, who, who is it? Is it, is it Nick Bear that says that? Embrace the suck? Who says that? Yeah. Who's, no, that's Nick is Bear. Is it his? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Possibly. Embrace the suck. It's like, just embrace the shit that. Fact check. Doesn't feel great. Yeah. Fact check that shit. Embrace the stuff that is not doesn't come naturally isn't easy to you like find like the same it like ties back into all the stuff about challenge like challenge is good embrace that shit find stuff that sucks and do it because it'll just make you more resilient as a person make you you know a better person i mean it's like it sounds bad like you're not a bad person now but it'll build your strength it's fucking awesome so it's a marine thing. Uh, One of their like principles or mindsets or philosophies. Makes so which much sense. <laughs> makes sense because I, I've definitely heard Josh Bridges say that once before as well. Yeah. Who was also well, he was a seal, but I'm sure they have yeah. similar philosophies. And, He's, he was he was a what? He was a, he was a seal. Was he a seal? Yeah, I just thought oh, yeah. he said it really funny. I, like, oh, I don't want to hear it again. Seal. <laughs> people, people who say pillows weird. Pillows. Pillow. Seal. Ah, oh, fuck! It's like that singer. With the... Oh, you know, the... the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the man of color. With, <laughs> with the... Uh, don't know. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> where are you at now with That's, your training? Uh, what, what's, was, what are your I was, goals? I was about to go down the deep, dark rabbit hole of like people being too sensitive. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, we'll save that one for we'll, later. Yeah, we'll <laughs> save that. Uh, training goals. Well, that's probably... Ah, oh, no. I do actually have some, some cool ones at the moment. Um, so, before... Yeah. Before we went into lockdown, I had the cool concept of 200 and 200 in 200, which was going to be a 200 kilo deadlift and a 200 kilometer run within 200 days of each other. Nice. So that was the goal was to be strong and fit at the same time, kind of just to put the middle finger up to all the <laughs> strength and conditioning science that says yeah. that you can't be two things at once. Um, cause I feel like there's so many people that have proven that now. Oh, for sure. Like there's a big thing in America at the moment of the 500 pound deadlift and five minute mile you see hunter is, yeah. hunter do that the other day and like <laughs> fucking he just ripped it and then tripped over, over the, the bar and then just fucking sprinted yeah which um i don't know what a five minute mile is but i feel like it's like a oh, yeah, fact check. yeah fact check you tell your story tell my story um but yeah i feel like it's like a two i have my stab first a 254 there's my maths um, so yeah, the story, 200 kilo deadlift, 200 K run within 200 days, just to sort of express that strength and endurance can exist in the same realm and in the same body at the same time. That was the 200 day time concept, but, um, I was building up a couple, couple nice races. I had a nice little plan for my trail runs and stuff, but then obviously going into lockdown, all that jazz has taken a pause. So, uh, I don't know what we're really focusing on now. At the moment, kind of just focusing on training just to move each day, stay fit, stay healthy, stay strong. All the good stuff during lockdown, stay sane. I think that's probably big, my, my big overlying goal during training. It's always just been training because I love it and always just training to have fun. And if I get sick of something, like if I get sick of my strength phase or powerlifting or whatever, 
and I'm not too hard on myself that I should keep going and stay on the same route and you know I have to reach these certain goals I just change them go with whatever's fun whatever feels good if I feel like going into endurance move into that I've always just trained because I love it which I think is important because whatever five or six years later I'm still training once twice a day six seven days a week and it's not mentally taxing because I'm not fatigued from doing the same stuff all the time I just always mix it up and always do what feels good so somehow in the long run of that training for whatever feels good I've ended up getting stronger and fitter just because I've been able to train consistently Ooh, Ooh, that, yeah. could lead, that could that, lead into your trump cards all right all right we'll, we'll park yeah. that consistency uh, yeah. the the it's so a five minute mile is a 307 k three minute 07 k so better than do you reckon you could run that I definitely couldn't I reckon my hamstring would snap I don't know I was doing a track session yesterday five by four hundreds with a 100 meter walk in between how long was that taking you no because when we were doing it it was like we were running the other day when we were running them it was like one minute 20 to 125 Ooh. I don't know. I didn't Before time it. I was just going off pace. So I was okay. trying to keep it under three minute pace. Oh, shit. Okay. So, yeah, that was way <laughs> yeah. quicker than what we yeah. were doing. <laughs> yeah. Trying being keyword. Um, but it was real weird. I found that I was like, I was bonking real hard. If I was, if like, if I ran the first 200 in like a 245 or 250 pace, I was just zonked for the next 200. But if I dropped back to like a three minute, I could hold 300 or 350 real nicely. Okay. But then I found if I dropped back to a 325, I felt like I could just run like five kilometers at that. Real, there was, yeah, there was a real big jump in, in sensation. I'm, probably, uh, I'm sure I probably couldn't, but I reckon I could probably nab a 307K. Maybe that's a little sneaky goal yeah. in the next few weeks. We'll probably get that. it next week. What's yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> just go out, run hard until I throw up, and then be like, ah, oh, cool, that one's in the bag. Yeah. That's legit. Like, you could actually tick off the goal of being delirious and cooked just by going out and sprinting until you fucking yeah. can't sprint anymore. Because I feel like that's the best way to just fuck yourself up. Just run really hard. Mm. Like, it doesn't matter what fitness level you are. You can go out and just run really hard for, like, as long as you can. And you get to the point where you just can't do it anymore. Like, a true Tabata of sprinting, I reckon, is one of the worst things you can do. Yep. For those who are uninitiated, Tabata is basically just 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for eight rounds. If you're like genuinely sprinting at 100%, I reckon you can do like two or three rounds and you're cooked. You just, you can't run at 100% after that. No. Like after your first one, your second one's obviously going to be slower, but you can still put in 100% effort. But after three, personally, man, you yeah. cannot do a fourth with any good intensity. It's like, it'd be the same as the assault bike. Yeah. If you were to do it like your, <laughs> if you were to like compare your 100% on your first effort to 100% on your third or fourth effort, mm. it would probably be, probably be equivalent to like 60% of your first. That's how much you would lose. Yeah. Like yeah. your 100% on your fourth would be like 60% of your first. You'd be mm. fucked. I was reading something on Salt Bike the other day. It was like a little article of basically why is it just the worst piece of equipment it fucking sucks. To ever. Um, and their theory and philosophy, which I kind of, I tend to agree with, is that it requires zero skill to get on an assault bike. Yep. Like it doesn't matter who you are, what your training background is, you can get on and just go as hard as you can and absolutely mess yourself up and not injure yourself or anything, just cook yourself. Yep. Whereas like compare it to a rower or a skier or something like that. Where, there's, there's technique yeah like most people's limiting factor is their technique and their ability to produce power and force yeah like they if you like- make key changes in your technique on the rower and the, the, the skier your power can like you see people skiing at like 250 and you're like how do you even ski at 250 because mm. we both have good technique on the skier so like mm. to ski at 2 minutes 50 per 500 is like what are you just standing there like do 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 like yeah. what the fuck <laughs> so as soon as you get your technique right right you just see fucking drastic transformations in mm. the fucking power output or the what you can actually ski at whereas on the assault bike you're just pushing pedals and moving arm mm. levers and if you're not pushing hard you just pull pushing hard with your fucking arms like yeah. it's it's not hard, not complicated i feel like there's little adjustments you can make to who was it? Like getting on top either of the pedals, Khan, maybe? Yeah, either Khan Porter or Marcus Philly. One of the two. Probably Khan. Did a little, yeah, his <laughs> machine on the bike. Um, it was just throwing out some tips on their Instagram story one day of like how to be more efficient on the bike. It's like, oh, hell yeah, this is like the secret to fitness. I'm, yeah. I'm watching this. And literally all it was was like setting up your seat height correctly. 
And that's the only thing that you can really change. <laughs> and then just be really good at suffering. Yeah. And if you still suck, well, maybe change your seat hard again. If you still suck, just get better. <laughs> yeah, legit. Just get bit, get fitter. <laughs> just get fucking fitter at uh, the old, uh, <laughs> the old fucking shit, shits and bits. Trump cards. Trump cards. Like yeah. Yep. So earlier in the week, oh, I'm in the wrong Instagram profile. That's so hard. You know. <laughs> managing multiple pages yeah. like you just, trust so me guys being a minor celebrity yeah just, oh, no. <laughs> well, well you can swipe up on your account you are a celebrity no not anymore i like Ooh. lost followers Ooh. i'm actually you know what i'm sitting at now i was yeah. at <laughs> above ten thousand, but now i'm at nine thousand two hundred and thirty seven. so i've lost the swipe up so word got out that there's a vegan cyclist and everyone was like fuck this guy shit. <laughs> and then i said some shit that people were like mm. like i'm sure after this episode comes out Whereas myself, I do functional training and eat meat, and I've got like a solid 300 followers. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, here it is. So I put up during the week, I was like, consistency has to be one of the biggest trump cards you can have in life. And that spurred a series of responses that like basically related to other trump cards you can have in life and what, other, what the other big ones are. And for me, if I was to think of another one, without reading out any that have been there, I would say, I'm going to put that, I'm going to airdrop this to Ben. <laughs> um, I would say like, if I could think of another Trump card, it would be other than consistency. I would say, I guess just giving your all, giving a hundred percent, like putting in because a lot of people, like it's easy to do something. It is so fucking easy to do something. I could go out and go for a run right now. It'd be so easy to do that. But like, it, it depends on how much I put in. Like I could go out and go for a run, but not give anything to it and just fucking float through it. And it would be a waste of time. Whereas if I was to go out and go for a run and actually try and make something of it, have a crack. Like it's so easy just to do stuff. Like you can do the dishes. It's fucking easy to do the dishes. Mm. But if you don't do them properly, then you're going to have to redo them. Yeah. You may as well yeah, just do them properly the first time. Um, <clears throat> I like the what you were saying in the, one of the previous podcasts about like, you know, like for this one, like giving giving your all, but also giving your all to the focus of that session. Like yeah. just going out and slamming yourself every session is not the goal or it's not, not productive. Yeah. Um, like having a focus, like you might be going out for a, a slow zone two ride. And if you just go out and slam yourself in zone five, then you're not reaping the benefits that you're meant to be getting from it. You failed the session. Yeah. Whereas if you give your all to staying in zone two, and sometimes that means being disciplined and pulling yourself back, yeah. <laughs> giving your all in that sense, I reckon is, is important. Yeah. And crucial. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Know. Especially like if you want to train towards your goals, like if you've got strength goals, like for me, mm. I'm really bad at this. I don't rest long enough ever. I'm not good at resting. If I want to hit, I've been trying to do it over the last couple of weeks. I've been trying to rest. I used to rest 60 to 90 seconds. Now I'm trying to rest two minutes on my main mm. compound movement because you need it. Like for me, if you rest, you know, more than your fucking 60, 90 seconds, you can actually hit the, 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 the lift way better mm. than not resting. So if you want to actually get stronger, you've got to rest more. Like you got to be disciplined to that. Yeah. I think that's something cool from having bounced around so many different, I won't say sports, but like disciplines yeah. in my training, like powerlifting to CrossFit to whatever. You learn different things in each one. Like if you play in the CrossFit realm, there's no such thing as more than like 60 seconds rest. Like yeah. even their strength work, unless they're like tip top athletes. Emoms. Yeah, everything's EMOMs for strength work. Yeah. Whereas if you dive into the powerlifting world and you start looking into how they train and how they do stuff. <laughs> eat 10 moms. <laughs> Legit, homies are doing doing a set every eight <clears throat> minutes, sitting down, eating three bowls of pasta between each set. Fuck that. Lucky we're not powerlifters, otherwise all you guys would hear is us breathing. Cause they're yeah, all... I'd be like... I don't have headphones on today, so that would probably sound really loud, but... That's all you'd be hearing. Yes. In between, like I would, Ben would be talking, and then all you'd hear from me was just, just heavy breathing. But because we're elite and our resting heart rates are like thirty-five, we don't really breathe that much. Yeah. So, speak for yourself. But yeah, <laughs> I like breathing. Breathing's cool. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, back, back what are Trump some? Counts. You responded. Yeah. Heaps. I, I yeah. responded a bunch because uh, I like to regularly think about these. Uh, these things most of these made absolutely no sense or didn't make no sense but um some were like actual genuine answers others were just like sneaky life hacks that i don't know i think are cool so we'll kick off with the uh sponsor of the show the day 
Coco Coast Coconut Waters, not actually sponsored, but Coco Coast. If I you mean, could, please, that'd be uh, greatly appreciated. And it's already finished his can. Yeah. But I did actually, whilst Delicious. we were talking before, I was reading something. Shake and serve chilled. I didn't know you meant to shake these. Oh, I always shake them. Oh, I, I, well, I, I shook them when I was running down the stairs. I was like, shake, shake, shake. <laughs> See, I didn't know that. So I feel like I've been missing some flavor at the bottom this whole time. Mm. So I'm already oh. in a love affair with Coco Coasts, but I feel like our relationship's about to step up to the next level if I give it a little shake. Fucking earth. Only sold at Woolworths, Australia. Get in there. Get them on... Oh, really? Yeah. They don't sell oh. my calls. Get them... They're $2.50, but you can get them for like... What are they on? Like a dollar? Do they go down to a dollar or two bucks? Don't bother buying them when they're a dollar because Anthony and I have bought them all yeah. from <laughs> Elf and Woolworths. There's none left. Good luck. <laughs> I rated them. I bought like 15 cans today, so... I'll, I'll frequently go down to Woolworths and there'll be like no, none left. <laughs> It'll be one of us. Who's taking it's, them all. <laughs> it's one of us. Um, what else do we have here? So some, yeah, flossing was one of them. I feel like flossing super underrated. I don't even floss. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like... I Are feel you talking like, like, like flossing con- your teeth or flossing your muscles? Ooh, probably both actually. Because I don't floss my teeth or my muscles. <laughs> no, I, I don't floss either. I do... I do pay a lot of attention to brushing my teeth, though. Same. This is something I was talking about with T, my girlfriend, uh, the other day of how much you people pay attention to their... Sorry, sidetrack that. We're going to go uh, polls that I put up recently. One of them was, do you spend more of your life consciously or subconsciously? Ooh. And I just, so I many think people... I saw this one. No, uh, no, I did see this. I said conscious because I'm always thinking about yeah. the way I do stuff. So many people voted conscious and I just uh, don't want to say people don't, but I really doubt that people do. Like when they're brushing their teeth, when they're driving, when they're doing all those like autonomous movements and things, are they actually thinking about stuff? Like when I'm driving, I'm thinking about the lines that I'm going to pick, how heavy I'm braking, am I clutching and shifting it's, gears at the right time? Like... I'm thinking about the driving that I'm doing. Like when I brush my teeth, I'm thinking about am I getting to the back on the left, right, the left side, right side, top, bottom, whatever. Like I feel like people just stick their toothbrush in their mouth for two minutes. And they're like, oh, two minutes, I brush my teeth. Like That's what we were talking about before, giving effort. Like you can yeah. brush your teeth or you can brush your teeth. Mm. You're better off actually brushing your teeth and giving effort than just brushing your teeth. Yeah. I feel like, like I know for me, I'm the same. I give, like I was just thinking about how like, because usually I like to be in bed pretty early so I, when I brush my teeth I'm like regimented like I'll do I'll take those that sleep, sleep supplement stack that I've been raving on about for fucking you know the last couple of weeks I'll take that then I'll brush my teeth and then I'll like hit the, hit the bed and I'll just be like okay sleep time like and I'm so exhausted because I feel like my brain's been on since I've been awake you know what I mean like yeah. you've been conscious since you're awake so you just mm-hmm. boom 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 bouncing from one thing to the other and then when you get to go to bed you're like oh thank fuck or when you get to watch a movie, you're like, I can just switch off yes. and just melt into the screen. See, I like that. I feel like if you spend your whole life subconsciously, then there's no subconscious escape from it. Yeah. Whereas if you spend your life consciously, then when you put on a movie and you're like, I'm going to be really subconscious. I'm going to just chill and watch. It's actually relaxing. Yeah. And if you're relaxing the whole time, there's no more relaxing state than that. No. Unless you guys want to smoke weed. But but yeah, yeah. like, I mean, that's up to you. <laughs> like saying. <laughs> that's but that's such a fucking good point because and then you being conscious becomes so draining like it becomes a fucking yeah. chore whereas if you've been doing it for ages it's like any training if you're used to being conscious all day every day then you know it's not it's just normal mm. and then when you do get to fucking melt into a tv show and like embrace the fucking characters or into a movie you're like it's the best oh it's the fucking best feeling like going to a cinema how fucking good is that shit? Like yeah. you literally get to fucking sit there, you go Hoyts, don't go village because Hoyts you can recline and then oh, I didn't know. at uh, Hoyts Important. Greensboro, you fucking put your feet up and you can just chill the fuck out. Important stuff to note at our tender old age. Yeah, exactly. Of the mid-twenties. In mid-twenties. <laughs> we need our recliner seats. Oh boy, <laughs> trust me. When we've had this discussion. When we old, oh boy, we, we embrace it. We're going to train, but then we're going to get in a wheelchair. Because <laughs> <laughs> we like training. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't train smart. I feel like that would have been a, uh, a good trump card. But getting back to those. Oh, true. Uh, what other nonsense stuff did we have? No, nah, I feel like all the rest of it was pretty serious. Oh, this one's kind of a... This one's in the middle. Quote from Isaac Battlefield, a... Uh, what, are we, what is he, YouTube comedian? He's a, no, he's, a, he's a legit comedian. Legit comedian. Australian comedian. He hates vegans too, by the way. So him getting a shout out on here would... 
Yeah. Be weird for him. <laughs> so, yeah. Sweet. So, I'm shouting him out. He hates, yeah, he hates vegans. He hates cyclists and he hates vegans. He hates vegans. He yeah. has sticky, I think he sells stickers that's like, fuck vegans and fuck cyclists. So, shout out to Isaac Butterfield. <laughs> if you guys haven't watched his video on vegan cyclists, yeah, it's great. Very funny. <laughs> um, but he often says at the end of his uh, YouTube videos, be a good motherfucker. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's so simple, yep. but can be taken so well. Like, it's so easy to just be a good person. Just do it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's so much harder to fucking go around, I guess, to go around being a good person and just be a cunt. Like, why not just be a good mm. person? Yeah. Legit. It's easy. Just say hi to people. Be nice. Use your manners. If your mum didn't teach them, Google them. You can Google manners. Yeah. It's fine. Like, you don't need to fact check that shit. Like, it's nah. simple. And you feel better. Like, if you were to do a poll of everyone... Like, who would say they feel better after treating someone like shit? Even if that person's an absolute fucking mm. loser. Kill them with you, kindness. Yeah, if you were to treat them like shit and you're a good person, you would feel like shit. Yeah. Whereas and if, if you, you were to treat them good, you'd be like, cool. Like, you know, strut around and be like, I don't care. I'm just, I did my part. It's mm. up to them to do theirs. If they're still a shit person, it's on you. I feel like killing people... Blech. Killing people with kindness is the best thing ever. Oh yeah, because it, that it's or just super no annoying to someone who's an actual dick. Yeah, like if you're super nice to someone back. who's an absolute <laughs> dick to you, then they're just like, Fuck! Yeah. It makes them feel so <laughs> inferior. Yeah, they're like, it's not working. Which is kind of like a little bit of inception. Like you trying to kill them with kindness is you knowing that you're actually yeah. causing them more pain. <laughs> so, so you're, you're actually, actually being a dick. Being yeah. a dick. <laughs> oh shit! All right, on to more. Uh, Quality sleep, I feel like we can touch on that one quickly. That's just good. Yeah. Sleep's underrated. It doesn't oh, matter. Like, you don't have to be an athlete and be training hard to value quality sleep. Like no. Everything gets better. And I feel like that ties into Whoop have just released their new Ooh, yeah. 4.0. So if you want to, if you're looking to get a Whoop or you want to get into that, like shoot one of us a fucking message and we'll give you a referral code and then you can get a discount and a free band, I think the deal is. So if you want to upgrade... Mm upgrade your whoop or you want to get a new whoop band they've come out with a 4.0 which is just everything out it's like the fucking they've just injected the whoop 3.0 with steroids or it's actually called the whoop 4.0 which is annoying but pained me a lot yeah if you're listening whoop give us some free bands we'd be fucking wrapped yeah coco coast and whoop sponsors sponsors they're coming they're coming yeah like you say you're starting this podcast now so in five years down the track maybe it's something yeah I'd love to go down the track five years yeah. and actually be and sponsored just, by yeah, just get the sponsors now. Coast and Whoop. Yeah. Just shout them out. What else do we want to be sponsored by? <clears throat> Cervelo. If you want to sh- throw a bike, a couple of bikes our way, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. I don't or cycle, Giant. But yeah. Yeah. Mountain biking. Woo. Uh, Vivo. Wouldn't mind a oh, Vivo sponsorship. Yeah. The Toe Shoes. Mm-hmm. I've rocked mine. They're, I've worn them nearly every day. Like when I'm not like in cycling shoes, runners, or work boots. I mean, my Vivos or slides, mostly Vivos. They're fucking fantastic. Like when you get the, the pair that fits right, they're the best shoe ever. Can be troublesome, but they are good. Yeah. <laughs> I literally sent some back today because they didn't fit. Yeah. But yeah, Vivo, listen. Mm. Um, all right. More of these. Cons- more these trump cards. Trump cards. Um, I feel like this one ties into training nicely, knowing you don't know anything. Mm. that's probably something that I would tell my my younger training self like if I could go back to when I started and coach myself through that session yeah that's probably something that I might grasp the concept of because that's not something that you learn over time that's either you accept the concept of it or you don't and you realize that like if you haven't if you are listening and you think you know everything and you haven't realized this yet please take that on advisement like it's going back to that concept I think I've mentioned on here a couple of times like Every year I look back and think, what the fuck? I knew nothing last year. And then yet it just keeps happening every single year. Like I will look back on this year and be like, what the fuck was I doing? You learn so much. There's always new stuff coming out as well. Like I've had, I don't know, probably four or five little dabbles of powerlifting over the last like five or six years. And every time I go back into it, I discover new athletes, new educators or whatever, discover new concepts and theories that... I don't know, every time I go back to that powerlifting phase is always a little better than the previous one. Yeah. I know better stuff. Um, there's more good information out there. So even if you think you knew everything from the last time you did it, like it's always good to recheck that knowledge because there's new stuff coming out every single day now in yeah, every facet of everything. Everything changes. And there's always like, 
in terms of endurance stuff there's always new products out there that help you fucking stay fueled for longer like back in the day there was probably like just Gatorade and like Ben just threw the phone, the phone and just frisbeed over to my house um, wet, wet Aussies at boomerangs yeah boomerangs so might, it might come back yeah um, yeah there's always new shit coming out so like you just you learn so much and nutrition wise and studies wise too there's always stuff coming out about you know how different things impact you and stuff like that so it's like to think that you know everything is so I feel like it's an immature thing no offense to anyone who thinks they know everything but I feel mm. like mature like with maturity you realize you're like I know nothing and I never will know everything like there's yeah. no fucking way it's impossible mm. but the person closest to that is probably like a podcaster like a, a Tom Bill you or Joe Rogan yeah someone who's exposed to the different disciplines and categories of everything in life legit like but still they only learn the surface material of they're like the first hour pretty or good at a bunch of stuff or yeah. pretty good at knowing a bunch of stuff just yeah. they don't know everything everything about it yeah that was um that was another poll thing i did the other day if you guys didn't know i like doing polls on instagram i just like to know where people's heads are at i feel like i'm into philosophy yeah all that kind of jazz and psychology just haven't really acknowledged it yet so i'm just going to keep ignoring that and just keep doing <laughs> instagram polls because it's easier um but one of the ones i did the other day i had it in my head two seconds ago looking at something oh <laughs> what were you gonna say no i was just gonna i was gonna fill the space <laughs> <laughs> super ready got my back thanks man <laughs> um no it was how regularly do you rethink everything that you know or believe oh i like this which i feel like is good for well literally everything but i was thinking about it when you're saying nutrition before there's always new stuff coming mm. out like the whole concept of um like icing injuries and stuff the dude who came up with that study like i don't know whatever it was 25 35 years ago i think it might have been five or six years ago went back on it and actually disproved it and I said like that I it was incorrect yeah. yeah yeah um that you shouldn't be icing a lot of injuries which like that's it's still up in the air the isn't, debates but like like isn't inflammation like i know for i was looking into ice baths and stuff and you're not supposed to have an ice bath within 60 minutes 60 to like two hours after having a workout because it decreases the effectiveness. So if you mm. were to, a strength session, sorry, not an endurance session, a strength session. So if you were to hit weights and then you were to have an ice bath within fucking 10 minutes or within the next two hours after that session, it like takes down the effect of that um, session because effectively it's reducing inflammation in that area. And like inflammation is your body's response to like micro tears and stuff like that. So if you're trying to get, if you're trying to make gains and get yoked, <laughs> you you want inflammation to go there mm. and help repair the muscle and build it bigger. Whereas if you have an ice bath, it's like, nah, fuck that. Like, I don't know if you keep strength gains, but you ain't going to make as much size as you would. Mm. I so I wonder if that's like... the same, like injury wise. If you oh, ice it, time. get rid of the inflammation and it's like the, the injury is like, yo, what the fuck? Where's the blood? Yeah. Yeah. Legit. Like that's the body's natural response to that's the first stage of healing that injury yeah. is, is the inflammation. Um, so if you take that away, you're taking away the first step of the healing process. It's just going to prolong how long you've got that injury for. That's why for me, like I used to take anti-inflammatories every time I'd get sore, but now it's like, I will not take an anti-inflammatory unless I'm in like an event yeah big time if it's like you're in the dark hours of your last you know few miles or something yeah. if you're of your iron man you just need to get it done yeah no matter the cost or whatever to exactly. the injuries yeah 100 percent. otherwise the rest of the time it's like no like my body's injured sore i'll let it i'll work around it and let it rest like that's the whole purpose you let the inflammation go down naturally you don't want to be like popping anti inflams every time something goes wrong and then your body's going to be like how the fuck am i supposed to repair this dude that's like painkillers. I feel like people are so quick to pop painkillers, but Hate that's, yeah, you, the pain is your body's notification of what's going on throughout yeah. your body. Like, I think because everyone fears pain, they don't want to have, or well, they want to take those painkillers so they don't feel it, so they can keep going on about their life. Like, they don't want to make the relevant adjustments that they need to. Yeah. And be like, okay, I feel the pain. I'm going to avoid these movements or these activities or whatever. They don't want those signals from their body because they're limiting signals. Yeah, it's no like, one wants to be limited by anything. Why is it painful? Yeah. That's the question you should be asking. You shouldn't just be like, oh, it's fucking painful. No, I'll just ignore it. That never li never ends well. Mm. I've done that. Doesn't end well. Like, you yeah. got to find out why it's painful and, like, embrace it. Mm. I, I feel like that was, that was one of the big things in my back injury last year. 
was that I didn't take any painkillers throughout the whole thing, even though it was, there was days where it was excruciating and I wanted nothing more than to just take a bunch of painkillers. But pain was always information of stuff that I can do better, do different things to avoid, things to strengthen. And then coming out of it, I've, I'm now not worried at all ever about my back. It's always, always 100% and I have, especially in the gym, see heaps of people with lower back injuries bothering them for eight, 10 plus years. Yeah. And like disc bulges shouldn't be stuff like that. Like those things shouldn't be recurring over eight or 10 years. Like they clearly haven't identified the, the underlying dysfunction of, of hip mobility or of spinal stability or whatever that's causing the original issue because they just pop their painkillers. They take their rest for a few weeks and then they go back to normal. Yeah. Which is good. Band-aids it for a while. And then they redo these injuries over and over because they never get to address the actual core issue. It just gets progressively worse and worse, doesn't it? Mm. It's not a good way to, not a good way to handle shit. The bandaid, the bandaid fucking response never, ever works well. Um, what else did we have? To, I'm going to review my notes because I wrote a fucking extensive list of notes to chat about today. Oh, we've already clocked an hour. Oh. I feel like we could easy. We could clock, easily. Like three hours. Yeah, we could <laughs> easily do. Yeah, we should. We'll have to do another one soon. Um, we did try and fatigue the uh, conversation before we started. We've been chatting for like three hours. Legit. Already. We, <laughs> we trained for like 90 minutes and spoke the whole time. And then um, we did. Caitlin's actually ringing me. Uh, should I answer on the pod? I'm going to answer on the podcast. This is fantastic. <laughs> Guest number three. Hello. Hey. What's going on? I'm asking you that. What do you want me to do right now? Um, you're live on the podcast. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Well, I just wondered if you wanted me to get dinner. <laughs> um, I will let you know in... Do you want to come over and then we go pick it up together? Or would you prefer to get it on the way home? I don't mind. Uh, I'll head over. I'll see. Okay. I love you. I, I'll see you soon. Hey, I love you. Bye. Love you, bye. Yay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Decisive relationship. That's good. Oh, and yeah. it was talking about dinner. I feel like that's the... That's the topic that all relationships crumble over. Oh, yeah, for sure. We've already decided we're going to have pizza. From the place Tice recommended. What place was that? Oh, dough oh. time. I've got it. Yeah, oh, yeah. shit. See, another segment I was going to do. I'll save that for next time. Um, called Dough Pizza in Montmorency. Nice. It's got some, and it's got an extensive vegan menu too. Um, yeah. So there's one question I did want to touch on with you because I feel like we talk about this a lot. It's overtraining versus undertraining versus being a bitch versus being smart. Now, it's very... Like, it's a very complex question or a very mm. complex topic, but I feel like I feel like we struggle with this because we're always like, no, nah, like, I'm not like I'm not a bitch. I'm going to fucking launch into this. And we're not smart ever. Mm. We always end up pushing towards the overtraining and the, the not, you know, just end up going too hard, too fast, throwing mm. into... Like, we're not smart about everything we do. We always tend to lean towards the overtraining side. Like, yeah, I uh, feel like we are knowledgeable, but not smart. We yes. know it's the wrong thing to do. We know how to train wisely, <laughs> but, but we just don't like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, fuck. So true. We just, we lean into the, um, the, oh, oh, as Mike Pearson says, he talks about, he's a, he's a bodybuilder and he talks about him and, oh, what's his name? Mr. Wiggins. Nah, bodybuilding oh, nah. physio. Paul, mm. Paul's excitus. They have a podcast. It's called Barbell Bros. And they, they talk about um, when they prep for bodybuilding, they talk about going into the abyss. I feel like we're great at going into the abyss. Yeah. But we're not great at, like, you know, recognizing when we shouldn't go into the abyss. We're like, mm. fuck it. It's so much easier just to pull the pin and just In dive go. bomb into it than it is to be like, no, I'm just going to go around today. We're really good at yeah. being dumb and just jumping in. I think we enjoy pain and suffering probably more than we'd like to lead on because people think that we're sickos yeah but that abyss is like the whole of pain and suffering and we know that we shouldn't go there but it's just so tempting it's just so good we're because like it's pain addicts so simple isn't it <laughs> yeah it's a, there's nothing more primitive than just suffering yeah. and enduring <clears throat> it's so like if you've never put yourself in a position like that before it's so simple because there's only one thing on your mind and it's like mm. fuck this yeah. That's it. I think, 
I think that's why we probably like endurance. Like I love the endurance stuff because you get to the end of the day and it's like, man, what do I want? I just want some water, some food, and some rest. Yeah. Like I'm getting right back to my primal basics. Like do not I care. Yeah, I don't. I, just, I don't need some fancy new car or some new Netflix series to watch. Like there's some food and some water yeah. and some shelter and, and a blanket. Am, yeah, and I am ultimately happy with my life. And a fucking shell. That's it. Like for me, I know. Yeah, bars. especially lately because it's been so cold. Mm. When riding and running and stuff, I'm like, I just want a hot shower. Or a shower when I get home. That's all I care about. A shower and to lie on the floor and not have to be riding anymore. Mm. That's it. Like, it's so simple. Yeah. So, like, what it does is jumping into the abyss and the pain and suffering just gives you such a great appreciation for, like, the smallest things. Like, you know, for, like, me coming home, I want to have dinner with Caitlin, have a shower and just lie down. That's it. I look and, like, that's all I think about. I'm like, I'm just going to get home. I'm just going to get home. I'm just going to get home. And then when I get home, I'm like... <sighs> that was so worth it. I feel like people are always in the pursuit or like the, the looking for the happiness throughout life. But instead, if they looked for suffering and found it every time they got out of suffering, yeah. they would discover happiness. That's yeah. bro. But instead, <laughs> but instead, people are going around with no pain and suffering looking for ultimate happiness and they can't find it because they have no measuring stick. Like if you, if you suffer through something, yeah. you know how bad things can be. So when they're not that bad, they, they seem good. Yeah. Whereas if you get, roll around and nothing's ever really that bad, that means nothing's ever really that good either. Yeah, that's such a good way to put it. It's like, if you were to relate that to training, it's like living in the fucking no man's land. Like yeah. they say with, you know, if you're um, for running, if you, you're supposed to be doing a zone two run, but instead you do it in zone three, then you're, all you're doing is you're not getting the zone two aerobic benefit. You're like breaking your body down further in zone three so that when you have to do the zone four and five efforts you're going to be performing yeah. less because you're broken your body down more than need to, than it you were supposed to in that mm. zone two run because you ran it in zone three so it's like the same kind of fucking thing yeah i lost my train of thought but it's no, the same thing yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> no no, no. That, that made sense to me of like you spend your entire life in like the zone three of life, you never get to experience yes. zone one and zone five. Like yeah. maybe zone five is extreme suffering. Zone one is just ultimate bliss. You're yeah. just cruising along, looking at the birds and the bees. Like it's not even a hard run at all. Yeah. You never get to experience that because you just live in zone three all the time. Yeah. See, I'm glad that I had you to like yeah, yeah, wrote no, me through I, that one because I was like, <laughs> I just got lost in my own thoughts. It's all right. My original thought of drawing that comparison of like, you have to have some sort of measuring stick actually came from thinking about sausage rolls. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll patch things in wherever we need to but that was another thought concept the other day I think I might have told you but like when we rate food you know on a scale of 1 to 10 like oh this one's a this one's a 7 I feel like you need to have you need to have your measuring stick of what is it, a 10 of that type of food yeah. like oh my god this is a 9 out of 10 sour it's like okay well what is the 10 out of 10 sour like what are you measuring off yeah you don't know no no one's ever had a 10 no well this is where i was getting to with the sausage roll zen den sausage rolls are my savory 10 one million percent <laughs> see i've been looking at their shout out to zen den um oh yeah sponsorship free sausage rolls yeah yeah because they've got vegan ones <laughs> and too. rainbow unicorn biscuits oh, woo -woo. <laughs> they were the og they were the og biscuits yeah zendan has been our like our spot for fucking ever since we started doing sunday run days we'd just roll up and hit zendan yeah. afterwards it was before i was vegan so a while because mm. i'd That's have true. pb and eggs on toast <laughs> which if you haven't had life-changing peanut butter and eggs on two bits of toast doesn't have to be two no, it has to be two. It, it has, has to be two. five poached eggs. <laughs> Always five because two eggs on each piece of toast lays it out nicely, but you don't get it quite to the edges. And just like the, the old mute guy out of Baby Driver, you got to get that peanut butter right to the edges. Got to get the eggs right to the edges as well. <laughs> so obscure. But Have yeah. you had the vegan... Sausage roll. We keep there? looking at it and it's mm. massive. And I'm always like, I just want to make sausage rolls at home. And then I never fucking do. So I should probably just have it. Like Wicked there's this snack. brand that, oh, it's in a green box. They sell it at Coles and Woolies and they make vegan sausage rolls with like chickpeas. It's like spicy chickpea and they're Ooh. fucking delicious. So like I have them and then I'm like, I yeah. shouldn't, I don't, do you I need to send anyone? Do you want to cheat on those sausage rolls with a potentially sexier sausage roll? Yeah, but maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. Cause I usually go there every weekend twice because it's fucking zen den yo yeah i don't normally go on a saturday but on a once off today i went down 
and saw you he saw it. it was so funny <laughs> <laughs> and then coincidentally it was like oh I'll see you in a few hours for the podcast <laughs> over zoom through yes, green screen of course <laughs> <laughs> with 1.5 meters of um, more than 1.5 more like 1.5 miles 10 kilometers, kilometers yeah like 1.5 times K. 10 and i always misjudge how long it takes to get to your house from my house because not we have it here because it hasn't been for a long time yeah that's right. <laughs> always used to get it right when i lived in cold street because i was just i just assumed that i was four hours from anywhere and i would just leave four hours early <laughs> legit Fucking and hell. then i'd get there three hours early and i don't even know what i would do sleep in my car that's a question for you a lot yeah early or late Early oh. and prepared or late? Always, always early. Yeah. I went and saw my car last week and I was on time, like on the minute, but that upset me. So the next week I was an hour and 45 minutes early. <laughs> so <laughs> such an overreaction. <laughs> sat in my car for way too long. <laughs> um, but always early. Like if I'm if I'm on time, I'm, no. If I'm five minutes early, I'm 10 minutes late. Yeah. I gotta be yeah. like 15 minutes early. I like that. And I feel like it just gives you a nice space to like, you sit in your car and you get to choose what you want like everyone's so consumed in their phones i feel like you get to, you choose what to do with your phone You're like okay i have 15 minutes that's not a meaningful amount of time to do anything yeah so i'm going to pick very selectively what i'm going to do yeah half the time i just listen to music or take like a six minute nap because that's can bust those out in 15 minutes <laughs> fucking hell yeah no i can't do that that's i love that extreme fatigue my friend <laughs> but i can't do that i probably because i do sleep better than you i have i feel like i, yeah. I get a bit more sleep than well, you. until lockdown i sleep like a champion now oh true because you don't have to get up hashtag in the green nah, Fuck. we'll run a couple zooms but even the earliest zoom we run 6 30 as opposed to a no five o'clock class that's a good is, sleep in yeah it's great fuck yeah oh Oh, what was I yeah for me I'm early to love it like I don't like being stressed out and if I'm like running 15 20 minutes early I love it because it's like I get to get get there like crank the heat up mm. put the foot put a podcast on you yeah. know scroll a gram fucking I don't know you get to just chill out it's yeah. way better than if imagine rolling in like fucking rip around the corner like <laughs> park in do a shit park like you can't find a park what if you can't find a park <laughs> then you're fucked yeah. you're late if you're, you're on time like to the minute and you find a park you're late mm. but if you get there 15 minutes early you got time to fucking burn you, you can, can park walk. around the street and do a run and come there on time yeah well yeah i feel like you just give yourself choices if you get there yeah. early yes like you can choose to you know be on your phone maybe walk in early and just look presentable or whatever like just even getting up early you give yourself more choices of what you want to do with your day yeah like even if you want to do nothing that day you still get to choose to do nothing you, for longer. Yeah, you get more time of doing fuck all. Yeah. Whereas like if you wake up late, you've got less hours in the day. You don't get to choose what to do. Your day's already filled. Yeah. Like, and then you get shitty. Like for me, I get annoyed when I get up soup, when I sleep in too late. Like it's mm, a, when I was- get nothing done. Oh, a few weeks ago when I missed training with my calf, I mm. slept in and I was kind of like, by the time I fucked around and got out of bed, it was like nine o'clock and I was like, fuck half the day's gone. I might as well give up and I was like <laughs> fucking shitty <laughs> when I was like I've got nothing to do today just enjoy that I was like nah fucking literally lost like nah. four hours like forget it that's a whole day that's like <laughs> half a day's work like fuck it's, it's over may as well just go to sleep now wake up tomorrow yeah that's it hey, that, right would be, that would be great if that was a thing whoop would be stoked oh man can you imagine I'm in I'm, the green I'm keen as for the new new one to come out end of September isn't it I think I start posting end of September <sighs> fuck man I really hope we're early unlikely yeah. but very unlikely but yeah you know what i'm annoyed about though all the whoop bands that yeah you can't use oh, no, this pink one is my favorite enf <laughs> cycling it's fucking mint but don't get to use it don't no get more. to use it anymore yeah. what do we do with the old whoops it's a trap uh keep them in uh, case uh, the one fucks up or uh, yeah maybe. do we wear two whoops well <laughs> do they both still work i would say so i so i would say the old one just goes flat but would definitely be good to keep in the keep in the closet in case yeah. the new one happens to stuff up. Yeah. Don't want to lose that data streak. Imagine you go outside, fucking throw the old one, and you're like, new whoop, <laughs> four four dotto, four dotto, and then it fucks up, like it glitches out. Yeah, uh, won't happen because whoop's awesome. But I don't know if you care about your data streak, but I I care greatly about mine. Oh, I same. don't want to lose mine. Did I'm you? A, I'm a check. I'm a check what it's up to. Did your um fucking oh what was it did yours glitch out yesterday mine wouldn't sync properly on friday yeah yesterday mine wouldn't sync properly 
Um, it was weird. I've been having trouble. All morning, I didn't have anything until yeah. about 11 o'clock. And then all of a sudden, everything came through. So, I had to manually program in my run. I had to manually program in my sleep. Oh. And then it gave me the stats on it. And I was like, I don't like this. It's stressing mm. me out. Nah, no, I don't normally have that. I'll occasionally have like periods where it'll miss three hours. And I got to catch up. Like, you know, disconnect it and resync it. Yeah, but okay. otherwise, good. But What's your streak? Data streak, 583 days. Fuck, mine's 443. What are your activities? 9.62. Damn, mine's 8.36. <laughs> hey, but for having that uh, 100 days less, you're pretty close. <laughs> oh, true. Peak strain? Uh, 20.7, which I know yours is 20.8 yeah. from your Ironman. It was... <laughs> Gotta I, go do an Ironman to get it. I don't know if I've mentioned it on the podcast before, but I got a 20.7 doing my half Ironman and I looked in the strain coach to see what it would take to get a 20.8 and it would take another 20.7 strain. So I had to go and do a full Iron Man to double the half Iron Man strain mm. score, score, and that's what I did. So good luck getting a twenty point eight. Just saying. Good luck getting a twenty point seven or a twenty point. Well, yeah, twenty point nine well, was twenty point. I checked because I was up on my stomach. 20. It's another twenty point eight. So you got a double Iron Man. Damn. Good luck getting that done in twenty four hours. Like I mean, yeah. I yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to do that. Like it took me eleven hours to do. True, because you can only get it in. I wonder if anyone's ever. So, for reference, the scale tops out at twenty-one. Yeah. I wonder if anyone's ever actually topped out twenty-one days. Maybe we'll ask Whoop. Did you see that Whoop Call podcast? Well. They did it with those guys that the military guys that did like some stupid thing that went over a day, and they yeah. I can't remember what strain they got, but it reset after twenty-four hours. Ah, oh, spewing. So they got like a stupid high strain, and then it just reset. Because 24 Cause hours capped out. So you've got to... doing the one event. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to do the work in the first day. Yeah. Like you've got to do it in the 24 hours. I feel like that'd be like if you went and did a 160 mile race or something. Like it's a... That would For do most it. people, unless yeah. you're a freak, would take you more than 24 hours. That would so... That'd shit me. That'd be so... Because <laughs> would, the, would the event... Would the activity be on the one day or would it be Ooh. an activity on day one and, and a, half an activity on day two? Because then it would the, the activity would only be like say you got twenty point eight on the first day the activity would only be twenty point eight, mm. and then the second mm. day would be like fucking like twenty point one or finish. something <laughs> yeah or like ten to finish like that that'd be so annoying spewing you just motivation to finish it faster eh? yeah I feel like we got off track there we were going to talk about training smart whatever oh true so or oh, hour sixteen leave it for another. We, we could just do another episode tomorrow. I feel like we should do another episode and we, we should talk about some serious stuff. But um, I feel like this was good. This was a good, a good introduction. Like a success. Yeah. Chatting with my boy. As yeah. you can tell, we can talk endlessly about not a lot of stuff, but we managed to do it. Maybe we'll do like a Q&A next time. Yeah. And we'll have some structure. That's a good idea. Well, like a get to know you Q&A. Because yeah. I definitely wanted to ask if he could be any animal, what would it be? But I feel like I'm going to save my answer for next time. Not because I don't have one, but because I feel like the suspense yeah. will be good. <laughs> nice. Well, I've actually dropped one of my answers in the previous hour, 17 minutes. So if you guys were listening, ooh. Ooh, comment it. See if you can uh, guess the animal. I name dropped it. I don't even know if I picked that up. Anyway. <laughs> um, thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't be mad. We weren't in the same room, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I'll chat to you guys next week. Toe on the line. Episode 12, wasn't it? Yeah, episode 12 with my, with my homie boy. Yeah, sure. Homie boy G. Benny, Dr. Fat Blueprint on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Take mm-hmm. him out. Get him up to 10,000 followers so that he can get swipe up. Do swipe up and do nonsense things. Yeah, hopefully this will be on video too. If not... It's a shame, but, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. And next time, I've got to try and get the fucking headphones working probably so we can hear each other. Mainly immensely. for sex appeal. Yes. But yes. Yeah, cool. All right. And functionality. Uh, shout out to Coca Coast. Woo!